Hi guys! A lot of people have asked about my setup for playing Elden Ring with Harp, and I wanted to use this video to go over some of the hardware and software that I'm using, as well as my control scheme. So, here it is. Let's start with my Harp. I play a Line and Healy Style 100. Originally, it was a purely acoustic instrument, but I installed a Dusty Strings pickup a while ago for easy amplification during gigs. This pickup consists of a series of four contact mics spaced at specific intervals and glued to the back inside to capture the full range of the instrument. Because the pickup works by being in direct physical contact with a harp and sensing its vibrations, it only really detects harp sounds and I don't have to worry about things like environmental noise. All the mics connect to a single jack down here, which is held in place by two plates that kind of sandwich this bottom sound hole. I actually had to buy that oval contraption separately because the default installation option was to drill a literal hole in my harp and I did not trust myself to do that successfully. From there, I plug in a quarter inch cable and then I run it into an audio interface which converts the analog audio signal into a digital format that the computer can recognize. This particular audio interface is the Complete Audio 6. It connects to the computer via USB and also has places where I can connect headphones to listen to the game audio and plug in other input devices like my microphone. Yes. Yay, it does not that much damage. There are a couple programs I open before I run the game. The first is Midgic, which is a plugin that converts live sound to MIDI. It's meant for electric guitar, but it works well with harp too, maybe because they're both plucked instruments. To access it, I open a new file in my Digital Audio Workstation, or DAW, set my input to Complete Audio 6, and put it on a track. Here, I'm using FL Studio, although I've also used Bitwig in the past. Most of the default settings are fine, but I do have to select No Sound here, since I'm not wanting to convert the MIDI to the sounds of any of these other specific instruments. I also set the output for Bohm MIDI Translator, which is the other program I have running. So this is Bohm, and essentially it takes the MIDI output from Midgic and allows me to pair the pitches to keystroke commands. Luckily, I have my Elden Ring configuration saved, so it's easy to pull up whenever I play, but it took me so long to set up when I first started doing this. Each of these lines corresponds to a keystroke or mouse command, and most of them work the same way, which I'll show you by setting up a crouch command. I'll probably delete it later since I'm trying to be fairly minimal and I haven't needed it so far, but to add it for now, I'll scroll down, click Add Translator, type in Crouch, and press Enter. Then I adjust some things over here. I don't really have to mess with anything in the incoming tab except for Note, which changes the pitch I'd like to bind something to. Nothing is bound to middle C sharp yet, so let's use that. I have no idea what rules does, so that will remain untouched, but I do have to change things in outgoing. As you can see, there are a lot of different choices about what can happen when I pluck that C sharp. Crouch uses the X key, so I'll select keystroke, physical keys, and then type X in this box. Technically, this should be enough, but for whatever reason, I found that leaving things like this usually doesn't work and I have to check emulate keystroke slowly. But in any case, I'll press save and hopefully I have a crouch string now. As of July 2022, this is my current control scheme for Elden Ring. As you can see, walking requires the most translators because every walk string does four things. To walk forward, I use C3, and rather than selecting physical keys to press and release the W key once, I have down selected, which simulates holding the key down instead. Initially, I had tried it the other way, but it was really annoying and difficult to repeatedly plug the same string only to move a few steps at a time. I also have enable key repeat checked, which I believe makes it the same as doing this. The default settings for this option put in a delay of half a second, but I always set it to zero. For left, right, and backward, it's almost the same setup, but with D3, E3, and F3 triggering A, D, and S respectively. The reason why I have more than one translator for each direction is because I wanted to make it so that I could switch directions immediately, rather than needing to stop my character in between commands. If I didn't have them, plucking the forward then backward strings would be the same as holding down W and S at the same time, getting my character stuck. To fix this, whenever I pluck forward, for example, it also tells the S, A, and D keys to come up, and I do that by selecting up and typing in the key I want to be released. Again, it's really similar for left, right, and backward. It's just different keystrokes that need to come up. 
On G3, I also utilize the up selection, but for this one, it's for all four directions, which cancels movement entirely. In action, all of that looks like this. I'm realizing now that this list isn't ordered by pitch. It's ordered by whatever I thought was most important to program first. But we'll keep going down and next are the camera controls. For these, I also didn't want to have a single short key press because that would just move the camera by like a millimeter and be pretty useless. I also wanted to avoid a toggle on off situation because while that seemed necessary for movement, it's a lot for me to manage two things like that and it would require an extra string for the off. So I do move the camera in increments, but it's for a greater distance than if you just tap a key. When I pluck middle C, which moves the camera up, it presses down I, but I also have it set that middle C will release I after a 250 millisecond delay. This is the same for moving the camera left, right, and down, which are the next three notes. I use these strings a lot for turning and moving around because if I just walk left, right, or backwards, I can't really see what's in front of me. So generally, I save all directions except for forward for when I'm locked on during a fight. Lock on, attack, Estus, roll, and jump are very similar to our earlier crouch command in the fact that I only had to change the note, select keystroke and physical keys, type whatever key I wanted bound, and check emulate keystroke slowly. It is worth noting that I had to adjust the in-game attack key because you're supposed to use the left mouse click to attack, but for whatever reason, that binding wasn't working consistently in Bohm, so I customized attack to H in-game and here. I'm pretty sure left clicking will still attack, but it's just that now H will do it too. C5 is the action string, and apparently this one is fine without the emulate keystroke slowly box checked, and I have no idea why. The next note is D5, which is bound to the keystroke E, like the action string. The PC default control for using a quick slot item is holding E while pressing the corresponding arrow key. Similarly, two handing a weapon is holding E and clicking the mouse. I made this one kind of like the camera controls, where it'll give the command for key down and key up at the same time, but just with a delay on the key up. I set this one to hold for three seconds. Then I set D sharp five as the arrow up key so that when I play D and then D sharp in quick succession, it'll use whatever's in my top quick slot, which is the spectral steed whistle. Two handing requires a mouse click. So after selecting my note for that, I had to choose mouse to the outgoing tab. Then it's just a down up left click with a bit of delay to get it working properly. The note I use for this is G4, which is actually the same note as attack, but it doesn't matter because they're the same control, left click, with the only difference being whether E is held while you do it. Map and menu are set to B2 and G2, and they just need the usual keystroke setup. I have some in-menu commands with also the same settings, but I don't really use them since it's not worth it to struggle through the menu with a harp. I usually just use a PS5 controller in menu. These ones are bound to strings I've already used and some keystrokes that I've already used, but when the menu is open, it's kind of its own thing, so it doesn't matter. Lastly, my back button is A2. And that's pretty much it. If you've watched this far and still have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll try my best to answer. Thanks for watching. I think that I need to suck it up and just be aggressive with her anyway because clearly the fight was taking like way too long um, otherwise oops that was a dumb mistake nope As long as he doesn't do that thing where he like does the projectile. Oh! I thought I didn't know. Then I think I'll be good. Oh, yay! Am I good on first try? Probably not since I said that. But.
Yes, I was gonna say it's time to get greedy, but yay, I got greedy and it worked out for the first time ever. So, there we go.